What's going on guys, it's Adonis. WWDC 2017 just wrapped up. I'm gonna go over my top highlights of the event. Now, if you guys like tech and geek culture videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and have notifications turned on so you don't miss any future content. Now, before we get into it, this is in no way, shape, or form in order of favorite to least favorite or least favorite to favorite, just things that I was really excited about. So let's get into it. So number one, we have Watch OS. Now, Watch OS 4 seems like another major refinement in the watch platform, and I'm a massive Apple Watch user. So seeing like a new workout pain, being able to scroll through your workouts a lot more effectively, being able to pull up music directly from a workout, that is massive. We get some new watch faces. That weird kaleidoscope one was kind of eh, but the Toy Story ones, I'm about that life. Now, one of the really cool things about the Apple Watch update is actually its integration to work with equipment in gyms. So being able to use NFC to pair with gym equipment to actually track heart rate, incline, things like that from the machine you're on and bring that information into the watch, that is super fly. Number two is Mac OS. And yes, they have another weird name, Hi Sierra. Now like the Watch OS 4 software, it's really about refinement. Now some of the big things that I took away from this was the new Apple file system, which got updated because it's been the same for like 30 years. Even though it was good up until now, showing the demo of how it will duplicate files and how fast and efficient it is, I was like, I'm sold, we're good. Now the big thing for me was the external graphics support over Thunderbolt 3. Now a lot of people since the new MacBook Pros that came out with Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports were really asking, are they gonna open up support for a third party external graphics cards? And the answer is yes, which is brilliant. So if you have something like a 13 inch MacBook Pro that doesn't have discrete graphics and while you're on the go, that's fine. But when you're at home, you're like, hey, I need this to be a workstation for me for video editing. You have that ability now. And also another big thing for us YouTube creators out there that are getting new cameras in the future that support H.265 compression, the Mac will already be ready for it, which is so dope, I'm really excited for it. Now to wrap all the software up, let's talk about iOS 11. So video now records in H.265 and actually is compatible with other devices that don't support H.265, so I wanna see how that works. And also another file format for photos, which is half the size of the current file size. And also in the camera, being able to set the start and end points of your live photos, also adding video effects. And all of these things are based off of machine learning. We finally got an update to Control Center, a much needed, that dual pane thing was just not the business. And one thing that I love about it is the support for 3D Touch built into it. Right now there is some functionality there, but this seems to be so much better for it. And I'm digging the sliders, the volume slider, the brightness slider, I'm digging that a lot. Not to mention the advancement that Siri seems to be getting. Now I can't speak for certain, but stay tuned to the channel because I will be doing tests on Siri as of today. So make sure you're subscribed, have the notification turned on so you can see if Siri actually lives up to the hype. But based on what they're telling us, Siri should have a massive upgrade and we have heard these new voices which sound so much better. And also Maps is a cool upgrade as far as internal mapping from malls, airports, that's so brilliant, and a do not disturb while driving feature which is pretty dope. And probably one of the coolest things about iOS 11 is the ability now to pay people with Apple Pay, which is really dope. A lot of other applications like PayPal allows you to do this, but now you can use it with your own bank cards that aren't associated with these applications. Verify with Touch ID, I'm digging it. And you send it through a text message, like, Done, I'm good, salute. And the cool thing about it is it adds to almost like a gift card slash credit card in your wallet, and you can either pay with that for other stuff, you can move it to your bank account. I was like, yo, I'm feeling this. And I lied, guys. My favorite feature was probably AR Kit. I'm not a developer, but what you're able to do with AR and where I think AR is going in the future, to be able to see these tools live in action on stage, it's, it, this is big stuff, guys. Like, this is game changer stuff. So next five years, AR, look out. It's coming, we're here, the future is now. Now let's talk about Macs. So we finally get KB Lake MacBook Pros, so awesome. Now we did not see a RAM upgrade on these computers, um, but we did see performance upgrades, which is always welcome. Now the iMac, this is interesting. So both 4K and 5K iMacs get newer displays. We get two Thunderbolt 3 ports alongside four USB type A ports. That's an interesting move, but I'm with it. And we finally get discrete graphics on the 4K model, finally. That's something that always boggled my mind. I was like, 4K, if you wanna do this. Now the 27 inch comes stock with fusion drives. 
love it. But you can opt for up to two terabytes of solid state storage, which I am digging. Not to mention the 580 Radon Pro with eight gigabytes of video memory. Boy. And then it seems like we have the 7700K in this iMac. I am so excited if that's the fact. That's super fly. And from Apple now we get 64 gigabytes of RAM that we can actually upgrade in shop. That's dope. But now the big one, the one that we've been waiting for, the iMac Pro. Now while some of these details on the iMac Pro are still obviously secret, this 18 core option, this could be the i9 that was just announced by Intel. And if that is the case, this could be extremely expensive. Up to 128 gigabytes of 2666 DDR4. Oh my God, this is not a Mac Pro, this is an iMac. So I don't even wanna know what they wanna do with the Mac Pro in the future. Like, where do you where do you go from there? Like, how expensive that computer gonna be? We got four terabytes of SSD. We're rocking Radeon Pro Vega graphics up to 16 gigabytes. Guys, like this is this is a ridiculous all-in-one. Like, ridiculous. Will it be ridiculously expensive? Maybe. Now, if you try to build a computer like this, that's low profile, doesn't take a lot of space, a 5K monitor, guys, like it's it's gonna be more expensive. Like. This is crazy, this is craziness. Now we do have a new iPad. So we got new iPad Pros as well, 10.5 inch. We still have a 12.9 inch A10X Fusion chip. This is a six core chip, guys. Six cores, 12 graphic cores. Now for most people, they don't even care about this stuff. But like when they did the Affinity Pro demo, boy, like this is ridiculous. And when he was talking about what kind of graphics performance this thing has, the level that we're talking about. I've been saying this guys for the past year and a half, the future is in the iPad. I've been, I've been trying to tell people, but they think I'm crazy. They think I'm crazy. And then the features that iOS 11 bring to the iPad, the drag and drop, the new multitasking, the files app, this is a win. I'm, I'm in there. I love the new keyboard. We got multi-language keyboards out there, people that don't just speak English. And finally, we have some kind of sleeve that has a Apple Pencil slot. How thoughtful. But that display though, 120 hertz refresh rate, yes. Which means the latency on the Apple Pencil drops to 20 milliseconds. It was already awesome as is, now it's less. Now last but not least, we have the HomePod. Now this is gonna be something that you're we're just gonna have to hear. Like seeing the technology, seeing what it can do is one thing. Speakers are so subjective. It, it's, it's one of those things, and I tell people all the time when I do headphone reviews and stuff like that, that it's subjective. It's just what I hear. Everybody's ears are different. So, but if you talk about the tech, tech looks pretty fly. We got a four inch sub right in the middle. We got seven tweeters around with beam forming technology. So I'm digging that. The whole idea of spatial awareness, being able to understand the space that it's in so it can get the optimal sound. Built-in Siri integration. Now, if it's based off of the machine learning stuff that we're learning from the IO, it has Siri built into it as well. And based off of what we've seen of what Siri is supposedly capable of doing now, this could be a really awesome combination between a smart home device and a speaker. Now, one thing they didn't clarify is, is it set to one Apple ID? Can you set it to multiple Apple IDs? And will it recognize different voices? That way, if you know my girlfriend's saying, hey, set a reminder for it, yada, 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 it sets it for her device, not for my device and everything else. And I'm not mad at the price either, 350. If it sounds, if it sounds good, we're in there. 350 is not bad, guys. Like for a home speaker, if it can deliver on the audio quality that it's talking about, this could be a steal. But these are my favorites. What are your favorites? Let me know in the comment section down below. Give me your top five, what your favorite things were from the keynote. And if you were unimpressed, if you're like, oh, you know, I'm kind of whelmed, let me know that too. Let's talk about it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. I'm gonna have a lot of iOS 11 stuff coming out the next couple of days, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Have notifications turned on as well so you don't miss that content. If you guys like the video, hit that thumbs up button, show your boy some love. And if you wanna check out my last video, the link will be right here to the side. All right, guys. Till next time, see you later.